Luciano Sanchez suffered one of the worst football injuries I've ever seen when Marcelo accidentally stepped on his left leg as he was trying to dribble past earlier this evening. In this video, we'll take a closer look at what exactly could have happened here with this injury. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So if anatomy and sports injuries are interesting to you, then please consider subscribing to stay up to date and support the channel. I'm not even gonna to begin to comment on just if this was considered a dirty tackle or not. I don't know enough about football to know what exactly Marcelo was trying to do here. So we're gonna keep all that out of this and just talk about injury mechanisms and what I think happened here. Of course, this is being reported and discussed like a broken leg. And certainly on first view, it may look like that because what we're seeing is a significant amount of movement centered around Sanchez's left knee. But I don't actually think his leg itself broke. Now there might be a, a tibia or a shin fracture under there. But honestly, what I would be more worried about would be a knee dislocation because of all the damage that was likely sustained by his left knee on this play rather than just a break of the tibia. Technically, this is of course all his leg, but in medicine, we try to be a little bit more specific. We would call this his lower extremity or his lower limb. We would call this his lower leg, the tibia, the shin bone, and then his femur and the thigh would be the upper leg or the thigh. And of course, the knee is going to be the joint in the middle. So what it looks like we're really seeing here is a severe amount of displacement and abnormal movement of his knee joint rather than just the tibia itself. There's some movement here as Marcelo steps on it in the ground, but I think this is all just the grass and the way that that energy is being transferred up to his knee joint, ultimately leading to the knee injury. As all this is developing, if we look at the position of Sanchez's left foot, it's going to land down with the outside portion of his heel on the ground, and so his lower leg is going to be a little bit externally rotated. Then as Marcelo's foot comes in and makes contact on the tibia or the lower leg specifically, it almost looks like Sanchez's knee goes into a severe amount of hyperextension with some increased varus stress, where the knee is being pushed from the inside in this outward direction, stressing the ligaments on the outside of his knee. And this is really where I'm most concerned about a knee dislocation because here in this position, we can really see those femoral condyles, I believe. We can see the contours of his bones, suggesting that his knee joint itself has had a significant multi-ligamentous injury. A final thing that makes me think more knee dislocation than leg fracture or tibia fracture is we can see the medical staff here working on that left lower leg and they don't really seem to be worried about stabilizing uh, significantly displaced tibia fracture. They almost seem to be examining his knee and stabilizing his knee joint more. We also did not see them apply an air cast onto his leg, which you certainly would wanna do if there was a fracture. It almost looks like they're trying to sort of stress and manipulate, kind of stabilize his knee joint a little bit to see if it is unstable, rather than be worried about a significant fracture of that lower limb. So again, I think knee dislocation would be much higher on my list of concerns here than just a broken leg or a tibia fracture. This initial impact that we see come in here from Marcelo, the inside of the leg is being contacted, forcing the knee outward. This is going to be a varus force. So if we think of the knee in this plane as neutral, something pushing this way is going to be a varus directed force, which is going to put tension on this outer portion of the knee, stressing the outer or the, the LCL ligament. So the opposite of what we would typically see with an MCL injury. However, though, when we get into the subsequent amount of significant hyperextension that we will see, that's where we start worrying about ACL injury, PCL injury, and that multi-ligamentous component that here would make me concerned about a knee dislocation. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I wanna highlight those main four ligaments of the knee that we talk about that provide that stability. So looking straight on at a left knee, on the outside here in yellow, we're gonna have the LCL. That's the one that if you think of a force coming in, a varus force is going to push the knee this way, which is going to put tension and stress this outer portion of the knee. The other things to consider is there's this whole group of structures in this poster lateral corner that are likely significantly damaged in this case as well because that combination of hyperextension and that varus load. Sitting on the inside of the knee then is going to be the MCL, a very commonly injured ligament. And then deep on the inside of the knee, crossing in the front and the back are going to be the ACL and the PCL. Typically you need to have three of these four ligaments injured to have a knee dislocation. Now there's gonna be some variation there, but in general, three of those four would be considered an unstable or multi-ligamentous dislocated knee. Some people might actually argue that a knee dislocation is a more serious injury acutely than if he would have shattered his tibia and the bone would have been poking out of the skin. Because yes, there's complications with things like infection that can happen down the road, but when you have a knee dislocation, there's this blood vessel that runs on the backside of the knee called the popliteal artery that can become torn or can become injured in a way that you lose blood supply down to the rest of the lower extremity in the foot. 
And in this case, time is extremely important. You usually have like four to six hours to work on restoring that blood flow before you can have sustained permanent damage and death of the muscle and tissue below the level of the knee injury. So it's extremely important to be aware of and recognize a knee dislocation because you need to check and see how the status of the blood flow is in case this blood vessel in the back of the knee has been injured. You can imagine, based on the contorted position we saw Sanchez's knee in, how this could tear, this could rupture this blood vessel in the backside of the knee, which is going to be extremely critical and potentially limb-threatening, maybe even more so than somebody who's had a fracture of their tibia with a bone sticking out of the leg. There probably wouldn't be enough force and stability in the joint to have both a tibia fracture and a knee dislocation. Whichever site is failing is going to fail first, but again, I would be more suspicious for a dislocated knee rather than a, quote, broken leg. Now, is it possible there was a tibia or fibula fracture? Yeah, but just based on everything we're seeing, knee dislocation would be the big thing to consider, which unfortunately is probably going to be a more significant long-term injury than a tibia or a lower leg fracture. I hope this video was interesting. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below and what you learned. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.